Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to have a look at the introduction to embedded systems. Although this is the introduction, we will be looking at the overview of the entire embedded system. But these are the most fundamental things that you need to be aware of. As a student to this course, I'm offering you this presentation for free on my website. I have left a link in the description for you to navigate freely. If you want to say thanks, then you can comment below this video so that I know. Now this lesson is entirely theory based but I promise you guys that I won't bore you so I have added enough graphics for the entertainment as well. So the first thing that we are going to have a look is at the definition. So by definition what is an embedded system? As the name suggests you it is embedded. It means that a few components are put together. In this case, it will be hardware of the software for some dedicated activity. I have highlighted the word dedicated because it is for one specific activity. For better understanding, let us look at the examples. I have taken the example of the ATM. We all are aware that we go to the ATM, we insert our card, add, type in our PIN and cash out, right? But we cannot go to the ATM and ask for a soda. That would be nuts. <laughs> So the second example is a calculator and the third one is a washing machine. We can use the washing machine for laundry but we cannot use the washing machine as a dishwasher, right? So there is a lot of emphasis on the word dedicated. Make sure you keep it on mind whenever someone asks for this definition. The next thing is the system on chip. By definition it means it is a microchip with all the necessary electronic circuits and parts for a given system on a single chip. This is the architecture of system on chip. This is a small chip like Intel or Qualcomm etc. You may be aware what this chip is but you are unable to recognize it as you don't know the internal parts of it. So this is what is the system on chip consists of. Now there are other two types which is system in package um, is packed and your third one is a system on board. So your system is built entirely on this board. There are three types of system on chip. The first one is the microcontroller, the second one is the microprocessor and the third one is the programmable system on chip. And the chip that we are going to use out of these three is the programmable system on chip because we are going to program the chip for some specific activity only. So few things which you can find on the chip are the digital and log mix signals or the radio frequency functions that will be sorted on a single substrate. The very fundamental thing that I want you guys to understand is that SOC does not necessarily contain built-in memory. So the memory can be internal as well as external. Here is a representation of the chip which you might be aware of already and this is the exact thing that we are talking about. Now where can you find these chips? In your smartphones, laptops, computers or any other system because that is the core of every system present in this world. Our next topic is chips on board. So this is the representation of the chip that you might be aware of. The most famous companies that design these chips are ARM, Atmel, Intel and Microchip. Now ARM is just the designer but it does not manufacture its own chips. Whereas Atmel, Intel and Microchip design as well as manufacture their own chips. But a very interesting part is that this microchip is brought by Atmel and the Atmel is brought by ARM. So ultimately, ARM has all the licenses to almost all the boards. So out of this, which board are we going to exactly use is definitely the most famous one, ARM. So the ARM stands for Asynchronous Risk Machine. ARM itself means the Cortex-A, Cortex-R and Cortex-M. So ARM is the ARM. So Cortex-A stands for the application which gives out good performance for the power supply that is the medium power. It can be of 32 bit or 64 bits and it is most widely used in rich operating systems. Now the most useful of this is the Cortex R which is the real time. Now the example I have taken for this is the airbags. Let's say you crashed into something and there is a delay of milliseconds for the airbags to pop out. So there is no guarantee of the damage that has taken place. So the real time system should have the least error margin. By least, I mean it should be negligible. The response should be so spontaneous that there is no room for error. So this Cortex-R is most widely used in optimization for real-time systems. Another famous use is of the Cortex-M series, which is a microcontroller. This Cortex-M series has six different versions. We will have a look there. We will have a look at it soon. 
but this microcontroller can be of 32 bits and it is most widely used for microcontroller applications that is in our embedded system the board that we are going to use will definitely have this cortex m0 plus series this is a pyramid that i developed for you guys it has all the six versions of the cortex m series which is the m0 plus m2 m3 m4 m5 and m7 there is no m1 and m6 and the Cortex M0 Plus is the most famous out of this. Our next topic is components on and off chip. I want you guys to pay attention at this topic because this is really important for you guys to understand what goes on the chip and what doesn't go on the chip. Now the things that does not go on the chip is input, output and the power supply. And the things that go on chip are interface ICs, your clock, memory. Now the memory can be internal or external but by default it is internal so i have added it on chip so when it comes to exam point of view you can write it as memory can be on chip or off chip and then there is your microprocessor and microcontroller i know i have listed down things here but what you do understand by interface ic's clocks memory what is a microprocessor microcontroller or what goes into the input output or power supply right so i have listed down few things for you to gain some knowledge so interface ICs are your A to D converter or D to A converter, USB, UART, SPI, your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth low energy. And what goes into the clock? And what do I mean when I say clock? Clock means your oscillators, your face lock loops and so on. And by memory, I mean RAM, ROM, flash memory and so on. We all know that we use memory just for the purpose of storing data and programs. What all comes under input is the switch buttons, keyboard, etc. Output is the display, your load, printers, speakers, etc. And then power supply, which is a bit obvious that you need to give supply to the board in order for it to function in the first place. So till now, we have talked about all the fundamental things and the design and what all goes into that board. But how exactly are we going to control the board? That is through programming. So how do we program the board? There are two ways which I have listed. The first one is the offline compiler and the second one is the online compiler. Coming to the offline compiler, I would not recommend it at all because this scale software needs different other files for it to function. The first one is the dependencies, then you need a Terra term or the external terminal for it to function and there is a lot of errors which can occur on the system side. I've explained it in my compiler tutorial on why you should go for the online compiler. Now the board that we are going to use is the Freedom KL25C and that board is ARM enabled by Embed. What do I mean by the term enabled? Now any board designed by this ARM does not necessarily have to be enabled by the Embed. Embed gives out licenses so make sure that your board is enabled by the embed that means it should have given out licenses to that specific board in order for it to function the online compiler that we are going to use is the arm embed their arm is in collaboration with embed hence the following so that's it for this tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it and grabbed all the necessary points that you need i'll see you guys in the next one